All right. Well, welcome everybody to today's webinar. We're going to focus our time today on auto actions, um, specifically around some case management things, specifically around things around the family licensing. Um, so let's oops, let's start. So my agenda for today is to talk about some um, different auto actions around client email notifications. So we like the idea of sharing things where your team is communicating to the client, but also wanna give you a touch point for how the client can communicate with you from the checklist. So we're gonna show you that because I think that'll be something new to you. Um, references. That's something everybody's doing. Uh, we see references being done um, on different tables, but this is gonna be pointing you towards using the references table specifically so that if uh, references change or need to be updated during the, the home study preparation process, you can add to. So we'll show you that. And this is just to get an email out to that reference to provide them instructions on what they need to do to get the information to you. Um, and then also household member background checks. So when you have an original home study or the first license that you're preparing for getting that um getting a background check for each person in home. But then also we've got fig finally figured out a series of auto actions to get background checks created for household members when you have an updated home study. And so we'll talk to that. And I want to just like reiterate, it was, this is what I'm about to go into is reiterating what is the home study process and like how a record works inside of SAM for that. Because it's a, it sort of is a stickler point for folks. It's difficult to kind of transition from the case to the home study. Um, and I think just the, when we use the word home study, we're thinking about the actual written document that comes at the end. However, in SAM, the home study record is the entire process from the moment that we say, hey, family, it's time to get started on, on the documentation we'll need to review in order to interview you and write that home study record, which is really the end of the process. So in SAM, you're gonna, um, you'll need to transition your thought from the refer, like even the reference, it's not a final reference. It is, this is the name of a human that the family has provided to you. And you're going to mail to them. You might have a phone call with them. And then you're going to like enter that you've received that reference letter or whatever you need to solidify that as a, a good reference for the family. And the thing is, is like you may mail that reference something and you never hear from them. So you actually have to get new references, right? Like the reference itself, the, the, is the reference record, let's say in SAM is a process to collect the information you need for that reference. It is not a finalized reference until it hits the end. So same exact concept with the home study record um, is it really is a process. So as far as auto actions go with sending emails and family notifications, I just want to give you some opportunities to think about good spots to incorporate SAM in your process and these auto actions. So I think um, one of the big areas to send emails is in transitions. And so we've got this, um, this diagram of this flow, right, of the family's license or portion of the family's licensing or um, process here um, on the side. And all of the arrows really are our transitions. And so a lot of times these things are happening um, at, like at major milestones, right? So you may have multiple things happening with an inquiry, but often we want to see things um, we want to communicate that, okay, this inquiries come in and thank you, family, we've done that. So that's an, an opportunity for an auto action. But you also want to tell your team, hey, an inquiry just came in. And so we want that auto action, a, a secondary auto action to go out as well. So a lot of times these um, 
spots will have multiple auto actions to communicate to different folks that need to know when something has happened. So um, as far as the checklist goes, the getting clients to notify your team at the completion of checklist sections is something that doesn't, I think doesn't feel intuitive to folks of how do we get, how do I get that to happen? So I want to show that um, in real time when I jump into Sam here in a second. And then the other thing that I think is good on your checklist sections that we just really wanted to share here is some of these processes like background checks, for example, have to happen for each applicant. And they might also be required, depending on your state and program, for every person in the home over a certain age, right? So you might end up with five background checks. And within each background check, you might have multiple clearances depending on what state that background check is for. So even a background check is a process, but at a higher level on the home study record, which these background checks are for, we think that it's a really good practice to put all background checks are complete, right? So we know all five of those have been received. Any, any number that are required for this particular family, all of them are received. Same thing for like all training is done, all references are done, all visits are complete. Like using those as milestones and um, to, to your process, because really these processes um, are complex and there's multiple things kind of happening simultaneously. So a wrap, a wrapper, I think is really important. So because this home study record idea is so it really catches people um, when they're building out their or customizing their site. I wanna just really uh, make sure that it's understood. So we're always trying to come up with a graphic that works. Um, this here is kind of the adoptive family process. It's, gonna, it's very, very similar for a foster care family. It's probably a somewhat similar process for um, genetic parents and things like that for folks. Okay. So like there will be differences, but this, this grand, you know, high level view of the case, it generally seems to fall in um, an order like this. But this home study record, it it um, can, depending on your rules, because you need multiple, it must be updated, it must be you know kept up to date. It can span multiple cases, and so this is what I wanted to just show: is like while a family is in matching, you can have these up, updated home studies. Um. <sighs> Yeah, and okay, so now we're going to jump into auto actions um, and talk about the checklist sections and seeing auto actions. And then what I'm going to show you is I'm going to build an auto action for families notifying your team on um, when they've completed documents, which is sort of this like seemingly missing piece, but we've got a solution for that. So again, checklist sections can roughly correlate to um, these big sections here, right? Like each of these boxes as the case moves, um, the checklist sections will roughly, I, I, I like to suggest that they roughly correlate. You might, especially like in the home study or a licensing section, it might be such a lengthy process, right? That's generally a three month um, workflow that it's broken up into more manageable sections. Um, so you, we don't know what that's going to look like, but that's what I think. I like, again, to look at the beginning and at the end. These are transitions between one, the process before and the current process and the next process. So these are good opportunities to set, to communicate to your team or to the client themselves or to a third party, right? Like maybe a county social worker is involved in it. At this point, we need to get some information to them. Just is gonna depend on what um, you're looking for, but I think those are good opportunities for email auto actions to be created for your team. Um, 
Let's see. So then I'm going to share with you, like here again, I've broken up the home study process. Ours is very simplified to help just communicate the big ideas um, in these webinars. So we're not looking at too many documents or too much because there is so much. Sending a home study packet is one of the transitions where we are transitioning out away from the case and into the home study that is is tricky for people to understand um and it may be because on the an original home study we're often calling it like a welcome packet i see it called the starter kit whatever you call it doesn't really matter at you are communicating with the family it's time to start the process and here are the instructions on how to do that process i will very much gear, um bet on um on your updated home study it's going to have a slightly different instructions but you're still going to communicate with the family at that point in time that we're doing something, right? So I like to go ahead and suggest to folks that you use the same, the same send, send home study instructions, whatever you would like to call it, but you get used to transitioning that after the application is approved right into the home study rather than us talking about the application approved and then for home city updates having a different field that that triggers that initiation of those this process i like to go ahead and suggest that to folks and it's a tr for whatever reason it's a tricky one to make and i think it is just because we're transitioning out of one table into another okay so when i go back to this each, you know, the beginning of this arrow for each one is the point in time we're going to communicate instructions of how to do this again, right? 10 months go by or whatever, whatever your time period is for the, and that you need to prepare the family for the next home study, you, you will communicate again. Okay. So I'm going to leave that at that. Um, so I think those are good ones there. Um, here in this caseworker process, just showing you again, all training complete, all background checks, all references are sent and all of them are received. We really like these. This may be literally all your team wants to enter into SAM and that's fine if you want just that really high level. But a lot of agent, um, agencies are using the more detailed, right? So every background check for each person and all the clearances data for each of those background checks is all recorded within the record. This is just the wrap up of that. Okay, so seeing those two. Um, and then, then this family process. So this is the part where I'm going to build a home study. So we know, especially during the home study, the family is giving you, gosh, like between 40 and 80 different documents and it depends on your program and what you need and is it the original home study or the um an update or an addendum right but you're getting a lot of information from the family and also depending on how your team structures this it may be this open-ended time period where you really don't know if the family's done Okay, so our focus is going to be here on um, these two. I think if I have, I think I should have time to build both uh, auto actions. So we've got a field on the home study record or the home study table that says the family is notifying the caseworker that documents are complete. So that is just a date field. This date field is linked to a form. Let's see if I open that up, which form this is. Yeah, so this is just a form built off the home study table that includes just this field. So when your family is online and looking at their checklist, let me go to this family. Let me show you that. Um, when they're looking at their checklist, they can see a a field once they've got all these documents and then it making it clear to them that they are going to go in and 
enter the date that everything's done, and then we're going to push out an auto action to them. So let me open this up really quick. All right, so the family's case checklist here is shown. They can see all these spots. This is the one that we're showing to them, right? Because each of the checklist sections, you actually have the opportunity to say yay or nay, we're actually displaying in this information to the family. So we're only showing them in this example, just the things that they're responsible to complete. And they'll see this um, field here, but this field is connected to a form, right? So this form, all we're having the family do is enter the date. And I'm gonna build the auto action that says, when this date is entered, send an email to the caseworker. And now we'll know that the um, this section of the checklist is done. Okay, so let's go and build that. When you are doing emails, um, you're really going to want a template. So under settings, the template designer is here and you'll go ahead and create that template. The template should, you'll choose the table, um, that associates with what you're talking about. So we're building something on the home study. Every time we use this field, right? So for every home study record, we're gonna be able to reuse the families notifying us of the documents. So even when it's an updated home study, we're able to use that same field and Sam will do it again for the new record. So if we're talking about the home study, we are going to write our templates on the home study table. We will want to include the case because the template allows us to, um, it the template tells Sam what roles, what people we can communicate with, okay? That's just sort of the, the rules of it. So usually we're gonna talk to the case manager or the social worker or the home study writer, like we're talking, especially in this part of the process, we're talking to that person. Um, and so we'll often pull the case table on a template that's built off the home study. I'm going to go to auto action. So I just want to make sure, and I'm not talking about um, how to use it, build a template. That's a whole nother, there's lots of webinars on that, but you'll need a template to build these. All right, so I'm going to create a new one. Notify caseworker that um, families are done. Family is, um, families documents are complete. Okay, so I can label this auto action whatever I want. You may find a structure that works for your organization. There are some agencies that are really large. They have lots of programs going on. And we see things like maybe it's like domestic, right? So that all the domestic auto actions line up together. Whatever you want to do, you'll come up with that kind of like um, structure, okay? Execute more than once per record allows Sam, it tells Sam that this can be done again. So there are some rules to this that we've realized. Sam has a, um, it will only enter this again if there's some value that's different. So like if a new date is being added, great, this is gonna happen again. If it all looks exactly the same to Sam, by default, Sam's not gonna do it again, which is good, right? Like we like that it's not continuing to throw stuff into our records that we don't want. Um, and sometimes we wanna change that. So we'll talk to that as we get forward. So execute more than once. This often happens on schedules like, uh, send this email, like expiry emails. If we've got this report that's due or you've got documents that have expired and they're still expired, you probably want to continue to probe the, um, um, or notify the family, right? Over and over again to get them to take action on what you need. Memos are super helpful as well. Um, I, I'm not going to create one here because we know what's going on, but we see this a lot where auto actions are built and we can read the auto action to get the gist of why someone created it. But sometimes it's helpful to know it was created because of this rule or we changed our process or this program needs it or whatever, something that's just sort of trigger why this was created in the first place because not 
just the logic of it isn't necessarily going to tell us why you still need this thing 10 years later or whatever, even a year later, right? So um, when you're creating an auto action, Sam is asking you what triggers that auto action first. So what is it that's happening in the database that's going to make us take a particular action? And in this case, what's going to make us send an email? By and large, the majority of them are built off updating a field. So this is like some data entry is done and the data entry can be that that, that field now has is just entered or it could have a particular value. Okay, um, it's going to depend. Inserting a record is like I've added a progress report or I've added a document and the document type is this. I want X, Y, Z to happen. Okay, um, deleting a record speaks for itself. Usually, I, I don't really use this very often, but deleting a record might send an email to somebody that um, like a program director to say, hey, wait a second this communication was deleted and you need to check in on that. Um, if things like that happen where people are delete happy, should probably adjust permissions to limit that. And then the scheduled trigger type is every day or every week on Monday or every year, look and see if, a, all, if the records contain these values and if so, take action, okay? So in this situation, we're going to do update field, and I'm looking for that very specific field that I built. So you're getting like the tables, and these are all the entity types. So now I have to drill down to where it is. This understanding and knowing the table structure is something that just takes time. Um, the more you do it, the more familiarity you get with it. I'm going to jump into the home study, and it was called Family Notified Caseworker Documents Are Complete, right? So when I enter this date, I want to send an email. So I could say is not empty. I could also say and the program equals domestic, and then I'm going to send an email to person A. I could replicate the auto action and say, well, and if it's international, I'm going to send it to person B. It just depends on what your team needs. Right here, I'm going to keep this really simple, but you do have the ability to add additional filters. I do believe you need a filter there. So it was allowing me to delete, but usually uh, Sam's default first filter that we saw there is the basic of what you need, and then you can add to it. Right here, we're going to send an email, but I do have options to add an alert, which is that like big colorful bar at the top of records. I can maybe show you that. We might update another field. We might say, well, when this field's done, we're moving the home study stage to documents complete, right? Or, or um, interview, time for interviews or something like that. Like whatever works for your team, that's, a, that's an option for you. You could add a checklist section. I kind of wish this action didn't exist and it really was only in the case checklist configuration that you can add checklist sections, but there's always situations or there could be situations that this is really necessary. So it, it exists. The group prefill allows you to say, well, when this is done, now I'm going to insert a bunch of training requirements. So what is the training schedule that this family must complete? Because now it's time for that. Or I could insert a record and say, maybe I want to add a case note that says family says documents are done, right? And that just gets added automatically at this point too. But here we're adding a communication or we're sending an email. It's going to ask me to select that template now. So thankfully, Ryan built me this template yesterday. Here it is, right? Notify caseworker documents are uploaded. So I've got to already have that there. And then I get to choose. So if you remember me saying when you're building a template, the template tells Sam who I can communicate with. That's what's going on right here. It's because of that template. So, and this little hint here, like 
read the hints. The system will tell you they're in a spot like this blends in really. I get that. And if it were in your face all the time, that'd be annoying too. So if you see the hints, they really are telling you, um, right? And so like this says, if you don't see additional emails, it means the template being used needs to have additional entity types, okay? Even if they're not being used on the template. So even if this template says, um, hey, Kate, um, this family has finish their documents on this day and we never say dear social or caseworker name or we never say the case program is this doesn't matter we still need the case table on so that we can communicate with the caseworker okay and that, <laughs> is that not on here that is not on here which is why the caseworker is not here so we're going to go and fix that um let me see let me see where i get that Right, so this is good. This is really good. Ryan, you will learn something today. Let's see. This is called this one, right? So let me share with you how you can tell what tables are on this. So this is our template. Under advanced options, there's the tables on the template. It's funny, this must be just built off the family. So I'm actually going to change this and put this off the home study, right? Because we really want it to be home study specific. Um, so it happens every time. And then I'm adding the case table. That's it. And when you add a template to begin with, you get to make those choices of what tables you're putting on. So as soon as I change this and press save, um, other thing here is, is I've something I think for troubleshooting purposes, I've seen people like just get really crazy and happy and start adding all like that's all not necessary. We want it to be very pointed of what we're looking for, what we need. And it just takes time, right, to understand that. But more is not more in the database. Okay, so now that I've saved that, if I refresh here, I'm now given case-based roles. And that's what I was looking for. So I want to send to this social worker case manager, and I've just got all these other options for who to send to. Okay. Press save. And the last, I want to say this is the last prompt of what do I need to set up is how am I going to send? So who am I sending to and how, who am I sending from? That's what choices are here. For things that are going to your team, definitely let the system default email account do that. Just done. Easy and quick. Um, you can, let me uncheck this, you can set from a specific user, right? So if I choose this, I get a list of people in this system. We don't have anybody that's got um, email sending settings set up. But folks who have that set up will be listed here. And you can also send by a role. And we get a list of case or home study based roles that are here that we can send from. Again, this, I believe, is pulled from the, the list of the template. And that they have, I think that what this is telling me, if they don't have an email account set up, it will default. Oh, OK. So it is a case or home study based role or the family, right? Because those are the tables that are used on that template. And what Sam is telling us here is if the caseworker that's assigned to a particular family when this gets triggered doesn't have their email set up, it's going to send from the default. But again, if emails are sent from like you, Sam, as an, like uh, a teammate for your um, organization, send things directly out of Sam, especially when they're going from your team. Makes it really easy to get these done quickly. Um, confirm before sending allows us, this is a really good option to use if you're communicating with the client directly. So you have an opportunity to review, am I really wanting to send that or make um, personalizations to the email? Okay. And then we can press save. Um, when I go and look 
for this auto action again, um, I think that might be a good thing to show you too, is how to find this. This is what I'll always get is really like the overview. So you can go in and use the green pencils to edit anything. Generally, the trigger and the filters need to correlate. I mean, almost always they need to correlate. Some where, where really you need a filter that says, well, that triggers, especially when it's an uh, data entry, um, update data, I think is what it's called, or update field. When that's the chosen trigger, you need a filter that says, well, that value now equals X, okay? Um, cool, okay. That took a lot of time to show that one. So I'm not going to show that again, I don't think, unless you want me to like move more quickly through it to see it again. But I actually think let's move forward from that. So again, let me go back. I think this is a really good opportunity for families to be able to communicate to your team through the checklist, which is utilized often um, when working on the licensing. Just having a field on the home study table that's connected to a form. And when the family enters the state, Sam's going to now send an email. So you need three things happening is you need this field. You need a form with the field on it so that the family can enter the date. And then an auto action that sends that the message to the team. Okay, so now we'll talk about contacting references. So we do see often um, teams will add reference number one, reference number two, reference number three. We need their name. We need their email. We need their phone number. We need to know, did we receive that all on a on the home study table. So when you do that, you are building many, many fields and, and eventually there will, it will clog the system. Like there's just too many fields. When you have multiples like that, you're often going to want to look to another table. And thankfully in Sam, the tables are labeled what you're working on on. So if you're looking for references, this, the table is either called references or family references, or um, like, I think in our master site, it's now like family details pipe um, references so that it's all these family details that the family provides during the application are all found near each other, right? So we're recommending the best the uh, best practice is to use the reference multi-record instead of replicating for each reference because you may end up with many more references because again, a reference may not come in contact with you and now you've got to get the family to provide you a new reference, okay? We are going to show you um, how the uh, using the application form how the references can be requested so that you know the reference name and email and phone number, and then thinking of the um, reference as a process so, so that you can email the instructions, the phone, and re um, receive the letter. This is the um, part of the application form for that same family, and this is just a spot where we're asking for references, right? So this is Again, the family is providing you this information and using one of Sam's forms instead of like a PDF will allow you to utilize the system to help you with the process. So as much as you can get from the family to do data entry, that is going to save your team hours and hours of, of time or just kind of taking care of simple tasks that the family can, can complete for you. Right, so if I add in Smith and whatever, I don't even need to enter all this stuff in here. Um, actually, I might do and Tommy Jenkins, whatever, and I'll do this. Oh man, right there we go. So now we're getting this information in. This is going to create the reference record where we can work through the process. There are 
other opportunities for this type, this subform were of a multi-record to be used in the application or on other forms where the family, again, like giving you household members or here's all the pl um, places out of our current state that we've lived in the last X years, right? So creating background check records for out of state or here are my pets. So you know how many pets you got to get vaccination records on, whatever, whatever it is where you might have zero or you might have 10 of something you uh, or that family rather would have that. You can use these to allow and allow the family to give that information to you and set your team up with the information they need. Ugh. Why is this on this page where there's like the credit card information? I'm like not going to be able to save this. Doubt it. But um, this is going to stop me. So I'm going to go find while well, that's thinking about it. Hopefully you guys can hear me because it seems like my internet just doesn't want to work quickly anymore this summer. Um, finding the references. So your agency site is going to be set up differently than ours. I believe our references are under the case details and there's references, right? So we're kind of putting, stuffing this detailed information in the case details section, but your references may be on your cover page. I don't know where they are. We could certainly have another whole webinar on how to find them. Well, I certainly love this, that this all got entered into the site. I'm going to tell you that, that feels really good. So here we can see this happening. Again, think about this references as a process. We've now received the reference information. And as the caseworker, I'm going to need to go in and mail the reference. So this is a really good, um, cannot remember. Oh, let me show you this. So ways that I find out if your team has built things into the site is to take an obvious um, field like mailed reference date, and I'm going to click here and follow to the field property screen. And on the property screen, it tells me if there are any auto actions, which there are none. I'm thinking that we have a uh, template already built though. And here I'll show you one more time where I can build an auto action off of that. Let me actually double check this first. Go to settings, template designer. So here's our reference request. Because that other one was not set up right, I want to just double check that this is based off the references and includes like the case so that we can see that. Um, right, so we're writing our message, what we want it to say and advanced options, tables on template, and it is based off this table and we're including the case. So that's excellent. I'm um, gonna go here to settings, auto actions, create new auto action. Reference instructions, right? And this is a great one because again, like I think I've said it now three times if I remember correctly. Um, if a reference does not participate for whatever reason, you get this opportunity to add a new reference. When you use the fields um, on the home study, often you're, you're limited because you only think, well, the maximum that we require are five, but what happens when one of those doesn't um, communicate? Now, where do you do you update? Like, what do you, you have to make choices where here you've got them and you could actually put in your process with this is like non-communicative, whatever, so that you know why you didn't communicate and or why that isn't the reference letter that you received, right? So here again, we're going with sending the reference instructions. I'm telling the system when I want this to happen. And then I'm going to tell it what I want it to do. So I'm sending an email, I'm selecting this one, um, reference request. And then here, I should have the, there it is, the references email address, right? So I can write specifically to that person because again, I've pulled that 
the template is based off of this table and there's an email address field. And so Sam can do those connections to um, get you what you need. That's it. Here again, though, this is an opportunity where you might set it by the role, where this is always the social worker or the case manager or the local case worker, whatever you call that role for your organization, that's the person that's going to send it. And so that'll be variable depending on who is recorded on that client record. And because I say things like that and I'm making this assumption, well, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Let me just be sure to show you because I've seen this not, not be understood quite right. This is here when you have a field that is linked to the person record. So Sam can pull that person record work email. Okay. Um, and in this case, there is no social worker and this would send from the defaults if that's set up my name in here. And now I've got a record and you can tell these um, records because they're a link that'll actually take me to my person record, right? And I have to have an email address in here. Okay, right here, right here. Okay. And I press that. Oh, um, the other thing is that is a good one to Confirm before sending. Um, I'm not going to show you it like that. So let's say I've not done that, right? Because you could tell when that popped up, there's a big orange bar. That means I can only do it. So I'm not going to show you that way. You go and edit. I can just save through here or press control enter to save. And here I might confirm before sending. Because again, this is going to somebody outside of our organization. We can double check. Let's see. So if I go over here, watch this happen. And mail the reference. We're getting this pop-up email, right? Which is going to that specific person, got their name in there and it's connecting, okay? References do not get access to the checklist, so they can't actually like write their letter or upload that yourself. Reference are a thing where they're going to have to email that back to you, and then your team will review it, and they can you can upload that reference letter here, whatever you wanted to do, okay, with, to record that being done. All right, so this is the fun thing that we figured out. It took us, gosh, like weeks to figure it out. We were seeing folks trying to do it on their own and it wasn't working. So um, we figured out how to make this happen. Um, background checks. Some states are requiring when we do an updated home study or a certain type of updated home study, we need another background check for the state that the family lives in for each person in home. It's easy enough when we insert a new home study record that we get parent one or parent two um, background checks, a new record created for them. But the household members is just not connected that way. Um, and so it was making it really difficult. So we're going to show you, I'm going to try and talk faster, maybe <laughs> like get to this. Oops, excuse me. Um, so how to verify... Oh, okay. I'm going to show you it to see if background check sections are auto actions already exist, um, how to look for that. That's what I want to show you for sure. And then I want to show you the um, auto action series that we created for this background checks. Okay. So, but I'm going to start here um, at this form that we built to offer to the family as like, <clears throat> a form that will allow the family to enter data about themselves to like update their record um, if they're doing a updated home study. So they could change their name if, if needed or change their address or um, um, add other folks that live in their home if grandma's moved in or if the, you know, college age student has moved out, something like that, that they can make that. Um, those changes for you. So 
our auto action is dependent on this field here and an additional field, which we'll show you. Um, so we're just offering this. This is what they told us when they did the application, you know, now at this point, 10 months ago, this is what they, the information that they gave us. So here they can say, yes, Ryan still lives there and Stephanie does not still live there, right? Because Stephanie's older or whatever, and she's now off in college. And so she's now out of the home. And this is what's going to create a new background check record for Ryan. So they'll submit that. And then when we go over here, oh, um, I'm just going to, I have to make a choice of what I want to do with this email. And right here, I'm just going to cancel it. Okay. So we don't need to see what happens with that. <clears throat> Under the background check section in this site, in our master site as well. So this will, again, this kind of varies for agency to agency, but we definitely think this is the best practice. <clears throat> We're now going to see, I wish, Ryan, we'd clean this up a little bit before, but I think we can tell which one of these three for Ryan were created today. Um, and so a background check record, let me just make sure that everybody understands what a background check record is. Um, <clears throat> it is the series of clearances or the, yeah, the group of clearances that are needed for a particular state for a particular person. That is that is what we've found has been the most successful setup for Sam. Is this is Ryan's for California, and these are the different checks that need to happen. Now, if that's really true for California, I don't know that that is, but this is like the general for when it's an in-state, you need to do an FBI, a state one, and a child abuse clearance. And then you may have additional that you're doing. So that is where we start to get customized in which specific clearance. And that's also our terminology that we're using. The background check is a, rec a record of a series uh, of this process for this person with the series of different clearances that are needed. Um, okay, so we are dependent on, Brian, do we have this? I can't remember where we've got it. I cannot remember where we have this, um, the other date. Field. I don't see it here, so I'm a little lost and remember. Okay. All right, cool. So here under settings and auto actions, what I wanted to show you is like verify whether or not you've got auto actions happening, right? So under settings and auto actions, there are these um, drop downs up at the top. And I, when I am exploring an agency site, use this all the time because I really don't know how you have it set up because it varies person to person. So I've got um, filters for what type of action are we taking or what type of trigger are we taking, or I can use the table. And I often use the table um, <clears throat> first. So I'll pull down the background checks. Like that's what I want to know is what's built at this point in time. And then I'm just gonna explore these different ones with you guys. So simple ones on inserting a background check per parent. This is like when the application is received, we're inserting a first one per um, applicant or caregiver, or however you guys label these um, folks that are family members that wanna come in and adopt or foster or whatever they're, aim is with your organization, okay? So here I am telling the system to add a background check record with this person's full name and the state that they live in. Because, And really I should put that this is also an in-state background check, right? Like I want to tell the system that this is for the in-state because our out-of-state background checks, we often do a, a trimmed down version of that process. And so we can display it that way. Um, here I've got one set up for a person at home. Anytime that a person in home and their birth date is updated and their birth date is over a certain time period, 
Here we've seen variations where agencies work in multiple states and for Missouri, it's, you know, 13 and for Kansas, it's 17. Whatever your rules are here, you've got this opportunity to put in filters. And here it's creating the background check record. One of the things that we were offered from the developer this week is an opportunity to tell general users how the auto, how that record was created. And so like putting in a text box field, auto action 204 or some, whatever you wanted to write that just allows your team to know because not all users have modification history that will tell the user how, you know, what auto actions were created or that pushed data in. This is just a nice way to display that for all users <clears throat> that can see this record. All right, so this is the family one. Um, I'm assuming Ryan is this one. And did we have them in here? Got it. Thank you. Okay, so we're focused on person and home. And here are my two different ones. So there's the, um, instead of going by background check, I'm going by um, person in home to search for the different um, auto actions that have been set up um, here. So this is the first one in our series. And this is, we felt really good. There's a couple of things that are happening here. When the, on that form that I showed you, the family says, yeah, this person still resides in your home, right? So when it equals yes, we're going to, we're telling the system to update that person in home record with this field. <clears throat> and it just says, yeah, the last date this person lived in the home and whatever the current date is. So next year when they enter, they look at the same form we're going to have the last date displayed or it'll be in the background um, and it'll be overwritten. This particular date field will be overwritten. But we're also telling the system to set, does this person reside in your home equal to no? Because next year when they look at that form again, that update form, we want it to be empty because we want them to say, yes, it happens again, okay? Second auto action in the series is when this date is updated. So this date that I was saying, asking Ryan about, it's hidden in the background. When it's not empty, we're going to add a background check record. And so this is only happening when that equals yes. So we didn't get a new one for Stephanie. We were getting a new one for Ryan. Um, and a new background check record is added. Right. And so we're telling it the background check record. We want the full name. We want it to say it's in state for the family's particular state and the particular auto action that's creating this. So again, users can know. One thing that we've had, we in exploring the this series that we had to figure out from the, the greater team is under really advanced settings on an auto action. There is this thing that um, the setting to allow duplicates or not. So if the inserting of a record, when we're adding a new record, that's our action. If it is exactly the same data that's being entered, Sam doesn't do it more than once by default. So this is a new setting that you'll see under the auto actions, really advanced settings that's coming into your sites. I, Ryan, it's not there yet. Wednesday of next week. So we have didn't realize that this is a thing really all these years, and but it is. So we need, um, we knew that, I guess like, we knew that this existed, but we didn't know that this was modifiable by us full admins to the site. So this will be available to you and you can now push this out. And this creates this replication of the background check every year for a particular person at home. So we are loving this series of auto actions because it took us weeks to figure it out. And when we finally come to a solution, um, 
all that, all that efforting feels really good, right? Like we're like, yes, okay, it's good. So um, two auto actions and just know like when you're playing with auto actions, it may take a couple of auto actions to create the whole process that you're looking for. Okay, it is not for the fan of heart. Like I said, it took us multiple weeks to figure this out and like several different sessions of kind of going through it, sleeping on it, coming back. We are happy to help, so please reach out if you need that support with coming up with a process to, auto to automate things to happen for your team, because there's so many options for what can be done. That's it. That's what I have for you today. So we appreciate you joining. Um, some of our next things coming up, Sam Talks, there's two more in August. August 17th, that is next Wednesday. August 24th is probably the following Thursday. And then we'll have another webinar like this on September 9th. We're going to remain around case management type stuff. And really, like, we probably should have called this, like, licensing stuff or, or home study and licensing. Um, but it's the case management for the family. And it'll be focused on reports. If you have questions or you want to know more, um, about Sam or anything with what's going on with you, you're always welcome to click the support button at the top of Sam or email us at support at inreachsolutions.com and we are happy to help.